We've already detailed how their default on, on America Act would cut 81,000 jobs from the VA, reduce outpatient visit by 30 million, and increase the disability claims backlog by an estimated 134 billion. It would cut veterans' benefits. That's why we saw public outcry from two dozen veterans groups when this bill was considered. Yes, more politics in the face of disaster. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre and Budget Director Shalanda Young both claiming that the GOP's debt limit bill will uh, cut and gut veterans' affairs, uh, also calling it uh, a name that they made up. Uh, that Chuck Schumer made up. Uh, President Biden also tweeted this, quote, 217 House Republicans voted to undermine veterans' health care. More than 50 Republican lawmakers sending a letter to the VA secretary accusing the department of playing political games and spreading fear and anxiety among American veterans. Joining me right now is one of those Republicans, Virginia Congresswoman uh, Jen uh, Keegans. Uh, she is also a member of the House Armed Services and Natural Resources Affairs Committees. Congresswoman, thanks very much for being here. What's happening here? Thanks so much for having me today, Maria. So the Democrats and the media are telling blatant lies about me. You know, they'd rather play politics with our veterans than do what's right for them just to win an election and really to defeat people like me uh, on the next cycle. It's ridiculous what's been happening. And it's become just this, this war of words. And I, I couldn't be more angrier and disgusted with the dishonesty that's come out of this administration and the tweets and the graphics and the social media that they have, the fear mongering that they are doing amongst our veterans. Uh, you know, I am a veteran. I'm a Navy veteran. I'm the spouse of a veteran. I'm the daughter of a veteran who served in Vietnam. I'm the granddaughter of a veteran from World War II, and I'm also the mother of future veterans. So to even insinuate that I would do anything that would cut veteran benefits or that would impact the people that I woke up every day to win an election and I'm here to serve is really just disgusting and infuriating. Well, I mean, I'm glad that you raised it that way, because I think most people are sick and tired of the politics, Congresswoman. I mean, look, we're talking about the potential of a disaster where America would default on its debt. The Republicans have never said that they are willing to allow America to default. Kevin McCarthy, the speaker, as you know, has come up with some ideas to rein in spending, because we know that reckless spending has cost 40-year high inflation. And yet, on a dime. I mean, like, it, within seconds, minutes, Chuck Schumer changes the name of the bill to the Default uh, America bill. And Karine Jean-Pierre repeats it at the podium. Are they not taking this issue seriously, that all they do is go to talking points and politics in the face of what could be a, 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 a serious setback for America? Yeah, well, it's first of all, it's a distraction from their failed economic policies, right? Okay, I mean, the Biden so that's administration is. is using this to distract because look what they've done to veterans, especially the yeah. ones that live in my second congressional district here in Virginia. They can't afford things like groceries and gas, buying buying a new car if they need one, buying a new home. You know, veterans live on fixed incomes. These are the people that that I serve. These are these are my family members. These are my friends. It's absolutely ridiculous to insinuate that this is happening in this bill. It is not in the wording of this bill at all. And you talked about Americans being frustrated. That is one reason why I got off my couch and ran for office, because I was one of those Americans who was very frustrated with the lying that comes out of government, especially from this administration. We've seen just ridiculous things that the president has been posting on social media, that Republicans want to take away things like Meals on Wheels. It is ridiculous. It is not in the bill. It is fear-mongering. And it's playing politics with our veterans. Yeah, it's a great point. And by the way, thank you to your family for fighting and uh, serving this country the way that they have. Cheryl Cassoni, jump in here. Woman, I want to ask you about messaging, because the VA secretary made some very egregious claims that even the Washington Post fact-checked and said were wrong. The VA secretary is saying that your bill, your plans, would actually create 30 million fewer outpatient visits at the VA, and that veterans would be uh, more susceptible to getting cancer and to heart disease. I mean, basically, this threat, this type of language, this rhetoric, which is wrong, is what, let's be honest here, is coming from the administration and the White House. How do you fight back on message to make sure that these um, lies are stopped? Yeah, 100%. I mean, my, I'm a geriatric nurse practitioner by trade, so to even insinuate that I would want to touch the health care of veterans, of all veteran benefits, is just ridiculous. So Republicans have to get ahead of this. We have to explain, which we do time and time again, 
that this bill is simply a device. It's a step in the right direction. The president had asked for a Republican plan for the budget. We presented him with one. We know that not everything in this plan will be what, what the finalized version looks like, but it's a starting point, and it's what they asked for. And now the president has to come and sit down with Speaker McCarthy and devise a budget. You know, the ball is in their court, and this brinkmanship mm. that they are exercising, where they say it's our way or the highway, that is what's wrong for America. That is what is scary. They are demanding a clean, clean uh, debt ceiling limit without any repercussions. They have literally maxed out our country's credit card. There's got to be some repercussions going forward. We can't continue down the path of wasteful spending, which we've seen out of the Democrat and the Biden administration over the past two years. Yeah, and it's just disheartening to see the lies around the debt ceiling as as Chuck Schumer changes the name of the act uh, to call it America's default act. I mean, it's just so ridiculous. Meanwhile, Florida Senator yeah. Marco Rubio sending a letter to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin raising concerns about adopting an all-electric, non-tactical military vehicle fleet by 2030. That is what the Transportation sec uh, Secretary said the other day, Jennifer Granholm. Rubio says this effort, quote, leaves our military distracted while China continues to upend the rule of law and prepare for war. Congresswoman, how do you see it? Yeah, you know, this is the Green, Green New Deal run amok, right, to even insinuate that the military needs to go all electric vehicles by the year 2030 is ridiculous. Right now, you know, what would happen to those men and women that are out in the battlefield that all of a sudden have to charge up their, their tanks or their military vehicles? Is there a charging station out there in the middle of the desert? There is not. Right now, we have a plan to get fuel to those those things, but we do not have charging stations. It is absolutely absurd. And I want to point out, you know, as a Navy veteran, you know, look what the Navy does. We have 11 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. So we are we are leading the way and thinking of ways that we can use alternative energy. So, so the military is cognizant of these things and, again, leading. But the fact that you want to mandate and, and, gosh, big government mandates are never the way to go, especially when it comes to, to clean energy solutions. But it's absolutely wrong for the military. Yeah. All right. We'll keep watching it, Congresswoman. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Congresswoman Jen Keegan's joining us. Thank you so much. We'll